Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. It is July 20th, 2018. Now, for this segment, I'm going to continue on with my analysis of Arctic sea ice and Arctic climate and climate change related features. And since we got cut off at the 10 minute line for the last video, I'm just going to continue on. Now, as I said before, the Arctic is experiencing slightly above normal temperatures for, sum for summer and for this month. Of course, this is a 1979 through 2000 baseline. So this baseline average is already warmer than normal if you consider the global context. And the Arctic is undergoing a climate change related phenomenon called polar ampl amplification where it's warming up faster than the rest of the world. Now, I'm just gonna briefly reiterate that polar the polar amplification signal tends to be strongest in winter time, and that's because the greenhouse gas warming effect is strongest during periods of darkness. And, and that's because greenhouse gases are very efficient at trapping long wave radiation. And so during the summertime, the greenhouse gas effect moderates for the Arctic because it's seeing continuous sunlight in many regions, almost a 24 hour day. And, and this effect is, is most notable in the high Arctic. And so you tend to see temperature moderation in the high Arctic particularly, but you, because the continents are warming up rather fast, you tend to see above average temperatures in the edge zone, and that's what we're seeing. Now, this forecast shows Wednesday, July 25th, and it's showing an above normal Arctic overall, and that's above the 60-60 degree north latitude line, with very warm temperatures in Scandinavia and western Siberia, and also running through the Canadian archipelago, uh, northwestern Canada, Alaska, and parts of extreme eastern Siberia. Now, I'm going to provide for you a larger analysis, just a visual, visual analysis of what's going on in the Arctic. And I'm gonna take a little bit of time doing this. Usually I, I end up rushing through this, but for today I want to just look at, at the visual. Now, some notable features are Actually, let's add some layers here because I want to highlight Arctic wildfires. And so we're gonna go ahead and do that. There we go. And so, so some notable features are a, a large mass of Arctic wildfires in Siberia. And this is something that we have seen recently, year after year after year, as summer advances, very warm temperatures move in through Siberia, much warmer than average temperatures. And as we've seen permafrost start to thaw, we've, we've had a proliferation of peat zones and these peat zones provide more fuels for fires. And in addition, Arctic vegetation is more vulnerable to fires. And so you can get these very intense fires with, with very large smoke plumes, and I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom in and, and look at some of these fires that are now actively raging as of July 19th, so just yesterday. So as you can see, there's this pall of, of very dense smoke over Siberia and multiple hotspots in, indicating large wildfires. And, and this is a 100 mile scale to the left and a 200 kilometer, I'm sorry, a 100 mile scale to the right and a 200 mile kilometer, uh, I'm sorry, 200 kilometer scale to the right. And so some of these smoke plumes are hundreds to looks like perhaps as long as 1500, possibly 2000 miles. So zooming in, I'm gonna drill down on this complex just so you can get an idea of what's going on at the surface. So, so multiple wildfires burning in this region of central Siberia with very large, very dense smoke plume. This, this cloud here is about 40 by 60 miles of a very dense smoke overhead. 
And, and seeing down through the cloud, we can still already see a very large burn scar because these fires have, burning, have been burning for quite some time. Now, just to provide some context, I'm going to go ahead and, and flip you over to Climate Central. And I just want to recommend Climate Central as a very good site for providing references for extreme weather and climate change related extreme weather and, and climate change related signals. And, and this article is, is from 2017 and it's written by Brian Kahn. And I just want to do, provide a quote for you. Of course, last year we also saw very extensive wildfires in Siberia. And, and Brian Kahn notes that forests are burning now at a rate unheard of in at least the past 10,000 years in Siberia. And this is largely due to rising temperatures. This region contains vast reserves of carbon stored in trees and soil. And, and thawing permafrost itself, I'm just going to add this as a parenthetical statement, uh, contains a lot of organic carbon reserve. And, and when it thaws, it can burn. And Brian continues on and says, and when they burn, they send that carbon into the atmosphere. And this creates a, a dangerous cycle of more severe wildfires and, and rising temperature and a kind of amplifying feedback loop. And this is, this is a concern among some scientists and climate weather observers. I don't want to get into a, 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 a doom and gloom kind of scenario, but I will want to identify this as, as, a, as a climate change related threat that, that we need to remain aware of. And, and this is a disturbing trend that has been ongoing for a number of years now. And so, so I just kind of wanted to drill down and look at that. Now other features, and of course I've used a lot of time, so I only have a few minutes. So other features that of note is a phytoplankton bloom that, that occurs this year in the Barents Sea every year now. And, and there's a, some science about this. Uh, it, it's not yet been plainly fingerprinted as a climate change related signal, but it's something that, that we want to keep an eye on. And also looking at the Arctic Ocean, I'm going to just go and drill down. We, we talked about how sea ice is thinning in the East Siberian Sea and north of the Chukchi Sea. And, and there's some very, very thin sea ice here now. And, and I just wanted to provide for you a visual. So in the upper level here, we see a lot of cloud and that includes the, the surface sea ice. But looking through the cloud, we can see large open areas of water appearing in this very thin sea ice and kind of a spackle-like pattern. And this is very indicative of, of sea ice that is very weak and diffuse. And so, so this region of sea ice here north of the Chukchi is, is very vulnerable to rapid melt. Similar features in the East Siberian Sea do show up as well. And also in the edge zone near the Labtev Sea. I'm getting a bit of lag here. And you can see that as well here. Notable that the sea ice has mostly cleared out of the Kara Sea and is rapidly thinning. And that sea ice remains far to the north of Svalbard for this time of year. Sea ice also rapidly thinning in Baffin Bay and Hudson Bay. And these sea ice extents are probably going to be gone within the next few days to a couple of weeks at most and also thinning and, and sea ice melt advance in the Canadian archipelago. It is notable that the Central Arctic has mostly remained secure in the sense of um, sea ice thinning, and that's something we're gonna wanna keep an eye on because we have had low pressure systems spreading out the ice, and so we might see some polinias open up in the high Arctic over the coming days. So a general analysis of climate change related features. Thank you for joining me and I will be chatting with you soon.